In the early 2000s, a global climate crisis emerged from humankind's disregard for the Earth and its natural systems. Scientists warned of an apocalypse the likes of which could eradicate human existence. The blaming began, with the leaders of many powerful nations pointing fingers at each other. Eventually, war erupted, and deadly nuclear salvos fired from the biggest superpowers ravaged much of the Earth, destroying and irradiating large portions of its surface. Certain major cities survived, and from the ashes rose again. The survivors did what they could, utilizing the resources of a few very wealthy corporations to combat the climate crisis. For almost a century, civilization has survived, hobbled together with corporate governance and expanded to the few sections of the globe still viable for sustaining human life. Antarctica, once an inhospitable frozen tundra, has become one such bastion for human life. Colonized by a Scottish arms corporation called Militech, Pilatus Antarctica is a thriving metropolis of the future. Last time on Roll Warriors, Soifang Ji and Maikaze's fight ends with the former killing the latter. Perhaps brought on by her extreme emotional state, Soifang Ji starts behaving erratically. She threatens the lives of Abel and Saul for getting in her way and is poised to do something aggressive when she faints unexpectedly. Abel, Saul, and Kander are thoroughly spooked, but load their unconscious friend into the car anyway. According to Dr. White, Soifang Ji's phoenix chip is affecting her brain chemistry, and the resulting cyberpsychosis will kill her if left untreated. Soifang Ji wakes to find Kander at her side, and with her young ward in tow, heads out after the Hellfire deck. We haven't really talked about your mode of transport. I guess the, um, like the family uh, hatchback is still like parked outside, so you could take that, I suppose. Right, I was just assuming she was just going to steal it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got the keys to it, you've already stolen it. It's, it's, you can't steal a car right. twice. Right, but now she stole it from the group. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sofuji Sh- gets in the car, like, cranks it up, and uh, just waits for Kander silently and methodically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll kind of like, um, she kind of sits in the, in the back seat. She wants to stretch out. All right, child. You know how teens do. (laughs) All right, child. Um, I have memorized the location to the Hellfire deck and we go. So Sir Frenzy just immediately like changed the drives and just floors it and immediately starts heading there. Okay, if you want to, f- if you're gonna floor it, uh, I'll have you make a vehicle nice. roll or a, dr- a drive land vehicle roll. Thirteen plus nine, twenty-two. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean you're definitely able to able to uh, rush there. Um, the definitely you cut pe- some people off. Um, you're kind of swerving in between cars, and uh, when you kind of get closer to. Um, well, you have to drive through Scott's Roost to get to the shipping district, and Scott's Roost has like a lot of pedestrians, and there are there were definitely some people who have to like dodge out of the way uh, as you kind of race down the street because they just they didn't assume that a car was going to be there or, or that it wouldn't stop um, when it saw them. So yeah, there's there's definitely some like close calls, and Candor Candor like is gripping the the 
fifth seat. And it's just like, can we maybe slow down a little bit? No, we can't, because we need to make it there as fast as possible. And if you're going to come, you're going to accept my means of getting there. And then sorry, phones you. I guess I can't go faster since I'm flooring it. But keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maintain speed. You arrive. It's It takes you about, even even like driving through the city is at, at top speed, it takes you um, like roughly an hour and a half um, from South Wharf to the shipping district because they're kind of, they're both on the south side of the city, but there's not like an easy way to get from one to the other. You have to cross multiple districts. Uh, so um, you finally you finally arrive and uh, pull up to uh, the monorail station. And this place is like just wall-to-wall people um, kind of wandering back and forth, hopping on trains, hopping off trains. You can pull into a loading and unloading zone. And people kind of give you like a hairy eyeball when you just leave your car there. But <laughs> uh, you're at the station. All right. So Fungi gets out, uh, opens the door, waits for candor. Are you coming, child? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I am. Mm-hmm. All right. So when we get inside, we'll immediately find the net terminal and we'll begin our descent. Now... If you are sure that you can survive an open net, then I will allow you to join me. But if you have any reservations, a single mistake will most likely result in your end. So are you sure that you can do this? I need to see this through. It was Smoke's vision. Um, and I think that we we owe it to find this deck so that we can... Stick it to the corpse. I like your conviction. I just hope this doesn't end with smoke coming out of your ears. Let's go. All right, what is Sofunji and Candor seeing? Okay, so you can... Um, for, you'll first have to scan uh, to find the closest port. Um, and you realize it's going to be difficult to access. So uh, the room where the net port is stored in the station looks to have some automated defenses to keep out intruders. And it's got, like, sit there. you can see that the terminal is um, at the far end of kind of just this small room, um, and the door is uh, closed in front of you. Okay. Um, all right, after scanning, is there... How is Candor's wireless hacking? Is there anything that she can hack wirelessly, like, from a particular distance or anything like that? Um, no, that's not really, that's not really how, um, you know, net access works in this, in this time period. Um, the best that she can do, I mean, she's got security disabling skills. That's her, that's her strong suit. So, you know, if there's, there is a, like a, a key terminal on this wall, on the wall, um, to open this door and she just gets to work on it. It's a pretty good number. Um, so yeah, I mean, she kind of just, uh, tinkers a little bit on this terminal and the, um, door kind of slides open with a little green light. Uh, and it's, and it looks like it's a straight shot to the far side. Nice. Okay. Great job, child. Um, I admire your skill. So fun. She proceeds. Okay. So you're just going to step in to the room. Yeah. And uh, I guess I'll do another scan just to check for anything like where the defenses are and any possible routes that we could take to bypass them. Uh, that'll be perception. Okay. So 16 plus 7, 23. 23. Um, you're about to take a step into the room and um, you kind of catch yourself. You're like, I know better than this. Um, and look, you, like kind of crouch down and look towards the floor and you can kind of just see a sheen, um, almost as if there's something being, like, hidden on the floor. <laughs> Interesting. Kander, looks like we get to play. All right. And is there a way to perception check again to see if I can identify uh, what this defense is? 
Uh, no, I mean, y- you can you can kind of suss it out. It's it's a laser grid um, that's close to the floor, and uh, yeah, they look they look primed um, and very kind of close together. So the only clear way to disarm it looks to be uh, at the far side, probably inside of the net port. Okay. Um, how are the walls looking? Uh, the walls are glass. Okay. I don't think shark skin works on glass, does it? Not, not really well. It it, it needs some some level of friction to right. dig in. Um. Okay. How how far is the distance? Like to the other side that the um laser grid is on. Uh, it's about twelve meters, so not something that you can make in a okay. jump. Um, Starfinger is wondering um if there might be a way. No, because if she does that, that might that might like set off an alarm. During my scan, did I locate any alternative paths? Uh, no. This room's basically it's a long box with a net access port at the end of it and the door the way that you are standing at. And it's other, th- other than that, it's a stark room with glass walls. Okay. Um, so from she kind of wants to try something drastic. Um, okay. So with my cyber body, so from she's pretty strong, right? Um, can I possibly pick up Candor and throw her across <laughs> The room. Uh, you could certainly give it a shot. Um, the candor will have to be relied upon to disable the security within the net. She wants to go in, so I guess this is her time to shine. All right. Um, candor, um, it seems that we... <laughs> There's only one way that we can get across. And... <laughs> I think I think it'll be pretty fun, and you're gonna try, okay? Um, that sounds ominous. Can we maybe talk about this plan before it's enacted? Um, okay. How how are you at sticking your landings? Oh no, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, no! You're not throwing uh, me. That's not. Well, if you want to honor Smoke and achieve the Hellfire deck, <laughs> I am going to throw you. And you're going to stick the landing. If not, you'll be. I mean, you're 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 like an assassin. You can't kind of you can't just step through this thing. Yeah, the laser grids are pretty close together. So unless you like slice salami as I get to the other side, uh, that probably won't be the best option. She goes, okay. Uh, how long's your cable? I don't know. Say about. Six feet ish. Okay, she's she's gonna say, "Darn." Okay, uh, I guess I can hack it. Um, I'm not really. I don't feel comfortable in the net, but if if that need what needs to be done, I can do that. Okay, can you at least can you at least dive to the point to disable the lasers? Uh, she says, "I I can try." Okay. Um. Do you have a deck handy, or would you like to borrow mine? Wait, can I give her my deck? Is that is that is? Uh, n- not really. I mean, you could give her you could give her a couple programs. Uh, those are just like little, um, you know, cartridges that can be embedded. She has she has a deck, uh, but it's you know it's it's nothing special. Okay. Um, she can fit like she can fit like two small programs. Okay. Um. How- so just two small programs? How much space does she have? Three slots. Okay. Um, I was going to give her two programs and, like, allow her to take it slow. I was just going to give her Worm and Invisibility. I don't know. Can she fit those? Or one or both? She could fit Invisibility. She can't fit Worm. Okay. Um, then I will give her Invisibility and allow her to at least try to hide herself does she have sword um no she's got a band hammer i want to give her invisibility okay yeah she'll take it load it into her into her interface all right candor (laughs) all right i am placing a lot 
of trust in you. And I know that you won't let me down. You are, you are skilled and you show it. And if there is any time to believe in yourself, that time is now. I assure you that my throw won't kill you. Okay. <laughs> All right. And how do we roll for this? Um, you're going to make a, I'll go with athletics, skill of jumping, climbing, throwing, swimming, lifting weights. Yeah. Cool. All right. It also covers, covers thrown weapons. Nice. Okay. Like teen, like teenagers. Woohoo. All right. Thank you for being so tiny, Hander. All right. So that's a D10 and athletics. Uh, it's a D10 athletics and Ooh, dex. Ooh, hell yeah. Okay. 25? You, you kind of pick, uh, Kander up overhead and and kind of just chuck her uh at this security terminal and um she it, you throw with such force that she hits the far wall um and kind of like bounces uh to the ground and like you see her catch try to catch herself with her her hand um and like a a laser appears out of out of nowhere and uh, just singes part of her arm, uh, and she goes, "Ah, oh, that smarts! Wow, I wouldn't recommend that. That's painful." Uh, and she's gonna like pick herself up and kind of dust herself off, um, maybe grip her arm, and say, "I, I made uh, it." Are you alive, child? Are you? Yeah, for the moment. Okay, I am. I am proud of your courage and your determination, and that wound will not kill you. It shall be a trophy signifying your valor or something of a sort, whatever encourages you. And you can do this. Okay. Um, uh, here goes. And and then she kind of, um, she plugs in to this to this terminal, uh, and kind of just like sits down on her butt, and she's like talking to you. She's like, okay, oh wow, it looks like the room we're in. Um, I could see looks like an itinerary, uh, and the route schedule. Nothing of importance here. Um. Oh, I'm I'm gonna. Okay, I could see oh, the next level's got a hellhound on it. Let me activate invisibility, uh, and so she's she's going to attempt to sneak past this thing. And I rolled into the hole in my desk. So let's retry that. So you should escape. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh she she's kind of just like, do I have to be quiet? I I don't think I have to be quiet okay all right going down a floor all right oh there's cameras Ugh, i should turn those yeah. off and wipe the data for good measure okay good good skill here's the here's the laser grid and then you see you just see like the lasers become visible and then and then uh the, like there's you notice that there's like a humming and then the lasers disappear and the humming is gone wow candor very good job. <laughs> I'm proud of the young netrunner that you may become. Just stay there and I'll get you out. And, alright, so from G. She goes, she goes, huh, there's another floor here. Oh, there's a code wall. Okay. Uh, can you get through? Oh, I, I can see that there's a door. There's a, there's a door on the other side of the code wall. I I can't get through the cold wall yet. Um, I'll just, I'll wait okay. for you in the okay, net. Okay, stay there. And Sofanji runs into the room, <laughs> smirks as she jacks into the net port, and and what is your uh, what's your deck? Um, okay, for for today. Okay, so my deck is I guess I don't need I guess I was gonna add worm, but I guess I don't need that. Um, so I want to do brain wipe, replicator, shield. 
and Deckrash. Uh, all right. So yeah, you you enter the net. Yeah, it's as Candor described it. The the first floor, uh, or it's it's actually the fourth floor, um, because this elevator goes down, uh, and this it resembles the the room you were in. Um, you can kind of see the lasers in the net version of this room, but they are not like a physical barrier or anything like that. Um, you can see like the planning schedule and monorail itinerary kind of floating as files off to one side. Um, and the elevators at the end of the room. Okay. Um, are there any interesting files that I can take to like probably sell? If you think that, um, if you think that like getting this monorail tracks, uh, route is a uh sellable thing it's mostly where they keep like it's it's mostly where they would keep like information that's available to the general um employee as far as like here's here's the line you're gonna run today and you know here are the stops you're gonna make and when it's it's nothing like trade oh, secrety uh, okay you know all right so from she says fuck it and we're basically taking the monorail into the open net, right? Well, you're at this monorail station, and basically, so imagine you're in a building, um, and there is a there is an exit door to this building. Most of the time, if you see that exit door, you don't fuck with it because you know if you step outside of it, you en- you enter the open net, which is a dangerous place to be. Um, it, it's almost certain death for most net runners. Um, and so most people will go to the location that they want to hack, jack in, and then they are in the building in the, in the, like the net lattice right. work of that closed system. Um, in this case, this monorail system just happens to be the closest accessible net point because the place that he was trying to hack doesn't exist anymore. So this is like this is like your point of en- entrance into the open net, so that you have the shortest possible distance okay. uh, to cross of dangerous open right. net. Okay, that makes sense. All right, um, all right. So Surfungi approaches the door with candor. Uh, oh, you're not on the same level as floor as she is. She's on the first floor. You're on. The oh, floor. I still gotta make it to her. Oh, okay, cool. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so because there is still security in this in this net. Right. Access. That's what, that's what I was thinking. Okay, I was like, I wonder if I had to fight that hellhound. Okay, so all right, so from G, um goes to the elevator and goes down to the second floor. Yeah, this is. There's a. You're in a small dark chamber. Uh, and there's a hellhound there, and he starts to snarl at you. Uh, and we're going to make uh, speed checks. Okay. Yay, I rolled a 10. Okay. So that is 10 again, so 25. All right. Hellhound has a base speed of 6. Uh, he rolled an 8, uh, 14. Yeah, you're, you're way faster than it. Um, so you will, get to, you will get to make your actions first. Okay, cool. And I remember you've got um, entering the nets in action, uh, going down an elevator is an action, uh, so you currently have burned through two of them right now. So I am going to stare at this ice program. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate my shield. Okay. And, okay, I could I can do one more, right? One more action. Yeah, and I'll remind you, Deck Crash and Brain Wipe are both anti anti yeah. runner programs, right. not anti black yeah. ice. Yeah, so I know they don't I know they don't work on um, the ice. Alright, I'm gonna activate Replicator and try to confuse the Hellhound. Four of Soyfungi's avatars kind of appear, uh, and it starts looking from one to the other. And on its turn it is going to attempt to attack the one to your right. Yeah, and it'll derez it. So, yeah, one of your replicants uh, kind of just pixels out. While the uh, hellhound is 
I guess, in the location of my, one of my clones, uh, can I make a break for it? Uh, towards the elevator? Yeah, you can, you can attempt to slide if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna attempt to slide towards the elevator. Alright, I got a 9, so 19. It rolled very bad. Yeah, you slide away. Woo! Alright, cool. So I he wants to leave it alive, just in case someone tries to follow us in there. And they'll have to deal with it. That's fair. So, yeah, you escape down to the next floor. You see the uh, kind of auto- automated defense controls um, that Kander deactivated. Uh, so there's like the security cameras control and the laser grid. Okay. Um, so Fungi wants to reactivate the lasers. And um, can I do that? I mean, I'm through them yeah. now. Okay, cool. So Fungi reactivates the lasers. And I guess, am I at Candor now? Have I made it to her? Yeah, you, if you if you just go down one more floor, uh, you are where she is. Uh, okay. And you're now both standing in front of a code wall. Okay, cool. Um, so Fungi looks at the code wall, looks at Candor, and asks Candor, are you ready, Candor? Um... Oh, did you want me to try it? I mean, you're coming, right? Oh, uh, wait, yeah, we have to yeah, break. I, I, Duh, we have to break the cold wall. Oh, dumb. Sorry. Guys. Yeah, it's it's blocking <laughs> your it's blocking your exit to the door. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh. Hmm. Okay. So I realized that I brought anti personnel programs, and I don't have anything to smash through this wall. Uh, that's okay. I mean, if you don't if you don't have a program, you can instead uh, do a crypt- cryptography roll and try to um, try to like figure out what the password is. Oh, perfect! Because my cryptography is amazing, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Very good. Uh, <laughs> and all right, so I rolled an eight, and my cryptography is sixteen. So, Fucking shit. Uh, <laughs> 26. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Um, so, yeah, there's behind this code wall, you can see kind of one, off to one side, it's the mo- there are the controls for the monorail system. Uh, and then next to this is an emergency exit with a red glowing exit sign. Cool. All right. Um, so, so from you does whatever theatric she needs to make it look cool for Kander. <laughs> as this as this code wall disappears. And alright, Kander. Um stay close to me and hopefully you will not die. Uh yeah. But remember this will take effort from you as well. So I need this to tr- I need you to treat this like the fight. For your life, because it will be. She goes. Oh, I've I've got no problem. I've got no problem smashing programs to bits. As I've noticed. As I've noticed. Now just keep that energy, and we'll be one step closer to the Hellfire deck. <laughs> it's almost in the palm of our hands. And she's gonna she's gonna res her band hammer, uh, and it just looks like a really big um, kind of rubber mallet. Uh, almost like uh, uh, what's the character from Sonic? Oh, Amy. Has Amy Rose. Hammer. Yeah, Amy. Yeah, it's it's it looks like Amy Rose's hammer. Cool. I was also thinking of Ramona Flowers' hammer. So <laughs> I'm liking the hammer visuals. All right, and all right, come child, we're on our way to domination. Uh, I guess we walk through. Into into the open net. Psst. Over here. It's Gavin interrupting the action to bring you some ads. This is your opportunity to do some soul searching and ask yourself, am I supporting Roll Warriors on Patreon? If the answer is no, maybe consider changing that about yourself. 2022 is a great opportunity to do all those things you've been meaning to get around to, like subscribing for $5 a month to get exclusive bonus content and get to suggest the prompts for future bonus episodes like some sort of Roman emperor. Go to patreon.com slash roll underscore warriors to join the party with fellow patrons Daniel Sittler, Billy Young, and James Beatty, and tell us what entertains you. If becoming a patron isn't on your 2022 resolutions, maybe following Roll Warriors on Twitter is what you've been meaning to do. In that case, we'd love to hear from you and just vibe. Lastly, for those who keep thinking, 
Boy, I sure wish I knew more about the cast and the characters. You can visit our website at rollwarriorsadventures.weebly.com. That's everything. Hope to be reading your name in the next episode. You take the exit. And uh, so the open net appears as a neon rendered version of Pilatus. Roads are bridges made of thousands of signal lines shooting off in many directions. Step off the road and a great black void swallows you up. Buildings are made of grids with trillions of bytes of data glowing a pale green. All around the open net are demon-possessed avatars. Um, They're kind of like, they look like zombies. They're just kind of uh, shambling. Uh, to and fro but you can see kind of around their heads they've just got like these little imps kind of like uh like laugh cackling and like just beating them over the head and stuff and so as soon as you guys come step through the open net um several of these uh avatars kind of start shambling in your direction welcome to hell candor uh Stay behind me, and uh, I'm looking around. I'm not sure if we should, like, engage them just yet. Is there any way to avoid them? Um, so it looks like uh, the direction that you have to go, um, so you you know that, uh, like, you kind of got out uh, into the open net as close as you could get to the um, to where this old office building used to be, um, but it's, like, a couple of blocks ahead of you, kind of off to, like, the right-hand side, these things are approaching you from the left. Okay, um... Sephranji grabs Kander's hand and starts running to the left. You mean to the right? You're gonna run right into these things if you run to the left. I totally meant the right. I I was saying the right in my head, and then I said the left out loud. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so... Just wanted to clarify. Um... So, yeah, she goes, you'll get no complaints from me. And um, you guys start peeling off towards um, this this building. You have to stay on the roads because, like I said, there's just a void if you step off of it. But all of these kind of um, avatars, these demon-possessed avatars, are just shambling around kind of mindlessly. And any that kind of see you start moving in your direction. Um, and so it, it's becoming like, if you want to avoid them, you have to kind of take a backwards way of getting to where you want to go. And eventually there is a, uh, you're at a dead end with a fence in front of you. Um, and five or six of these things chart kind of moving into, um, the opening of this passageway. Okay. On the same side that we are. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm guessing to fight these things, we have to use our decks, right? Uh, yeah. So they are they are other net runners. Yeah, who've been taken over. Okay, so let me. I'm just gonna go immediately on the offensive, and start with a brain wipe on the closest zombie shambling towards me. Okay, give me that interface roll. I rolled a four. Um, so, 14... Okay, um, yeah, that should hit it. Um, what's that do? Cool, it's that, it's that one that does permanent damage. If I remember, it was two... Let's go with that. I I rolled a two and a three, so five. Okay. Um, yeah, you see the, the first one, um, like, the, the closest one gets hit with this, uh, brain wipe... And what does that look like? A giant scythe. Okay, cool. So yeah, it it just kind of like a scythe appears in the air and just cuts through this thing's head and the avatar collapses and uh, de-reses and the imps that were kind of circling its head kind of shake fists at you uh, and then de-res themselves. Um, There's still four uh, heading towards you and Kander has sword drawn um, and she's just like, do you think we should maybe try to climb the fence? Uh, sorry, friend, she says, I'll hold them back for as long as possible. You go ahead and start climbing first. 
okay, just try not to let them touch you. Um, and she starts to climb the fence. One is uh, pretty close to you. You still have got to have a couple of uh, have a couple of moves left. Okay, I'm using another brain wipe on the closest one. Okay, give me that roll. Okay, I rolled a five, fifteen. Okay, yeah, that one will hit. I mean, you've got a pretty high bonus. You have to roll it really low to. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta do shit to eat shit. <laughs> and all right, I rolled two fives, so ten damage. Yeah, so just like before, this one, you're just kind of carving through these uh, demon-infected avatars. The brainless have become truly brainless, uh, and uh, you're, you're cutting your way through them, uh, and you, you hear like a, a step down onto the other side of the fence, and uh, Kander's just like, come on! All right, uh, how many moves do I have left? Um, I think one. Okay, um, if... Does it take a whole move to climb over the fence, or can I at least position myself to do it on my next turn? Uh, I would say I would say it's a move to to get to the top of the fence. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll get to the top of the fence. Okay. Yeah, these things are are reaching towards you because they've 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 made it to the fence now, and they're just trying to kind of grip you. Um, can you give me? Let's do evasion. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, that that'll that'll work. Um, so yeah, you you kind of slip over this this fence uh, as they try to reach for you, um, but uh, they they are unable to. The way forward seems pretty clear. Um, you do see, however, if you look up, because there's like a a noise um, that kind of uh, gets your attention. And you can see a like a big demon is flying overhead, and uh, Candor's just like, "Oh shit, take cover!" and goes to hide behind like a, a resed trash can. If Candor's gonna hide, um, I'm going to activate invisibility and try to sneak. Uh, past you don't it. have invisibility. Oh, uh, I give that to Candor. Damn. Okay, crap. I can you have it. Brain Wipe, Deck Crash, Replicator, and Shield. Okay. I'm holding you to this. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to activate Replicator um, to make a few different Cyclone Gs. Okay. Um, where are they and what are they doing? Okay, so... Um, do I get to roll for how many Cyclone Gs I made? Or is it just like a set amount? Give me a D6. Okay. Alright, I rolled a 5. Okay. So you can you can get three. Okay, three Cyphon Gs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the Cyphon Gs, um, kind of get her as far as like she can go um, into the opposite direction of where we're going, um, and then that Cyphon G is just going to make a lot of noise. Um, the second Cyphon G. Um, is going to go over like opposite side of where the first Sorfungi is and stand by. Um, so if the first replicated Sorfungi gets killed, the second one will become the de- the decoy. Meanwhile, me and Kander will like escape towards the building. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's like a side door to this building that you can see from here. It's like ten feet. Uh, so it doesn't need to it doesn't need to work for very long. Um, and yeah, so Replicator G starts making noise in the street, just kind of jumping up and down. And uh, you hear, like, this kind of blood-curdling screech uh, as this flying demon, like, lurches down and just pounces um, on the Replicated G, and that de-reses. Um, and I assume you guys are going to make a break for it when, it when it does this. Yeah, so we make a break for it, and... Um, second story from G, uh, starts making noise and getting its attention, uh, just to give us a few extra seconds to get inside without it noticing us. Okay. Um, so you do that. And so you have now reached this, the signals destination. You're in like this um, 
rendered office space filled with cubicles. There are a few infected uh, kind of wandering the first floor. Um, your scan indicates that your target is on the third floor. All right, can I do a scan again to find a path with, I guess, the least encounters of the infected to get to the second floor? I believe there's a different, uh, I believe there's a different thing for this. There is a, a, a Netrunner ability called Pathfinder. <laughs> there is a Netrunner ability called Pathfinder. That's what I want to use. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, that requires like a move, right? Yeah, that's a move. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's Pathfinder. So you get two more before other things act. Okay. So I rolled a six, interface is 10, 16. You, you gotta get a basic layout of the, of the office building. Um, you know that like, uh, to your right, kind of a few feet forward to your right, um, is a stairwell, uh, that should take you all the way up to the third floor. And there's only like one, uh, infected kind of just wandering around in that area um so you could either fight it or sneak past it but th there's just the one that's that's kind of in your way all right if we can sneak past it we're going to sneak past it okay yeah just make a stealth roll there's like other netrunner abilities that are close to this but i i think slide is better if they have noticed you yeah um and and cloak is for hiding hiding your viruses so yeah so i will do a stealth roll all right i rolled a nine 14 plus nine is 23 uh yeah that's that's pretty good um candor just can kind of she rolled well enough to follow your lead so you guys kind of sneak past it it's it's kind of just slack jawed um and every now and then it glitches uh like visibly the imps are just busying themselves with chasing their own tails around its head <laughs> Little fuckers. Okay. All right. So, are we're on the second floor now? Well, you can take the stair. I mean, the stairwell goes all the way up. Uh, just to the third floor. Okay. So we're out the door, and Swiftfunji turns to Candor and asks, "How are you? How are you, Candor? You're alive." She says, "I'm. I'm alive. I'm." terrified uh this is just one big adrenaline rush and i god i mean i just hope we make it out well just stick close to me and i'll do my best to help you not die if there is a hell this is it and if we make it through this we will truly deserve this hellfire deck so keep your head on and let's see this through to the end and, all right, sorry for G, and uh, starts making her way up the staircase to the third floor. Okay. Um, yeah, once you reach the third floor, you're, it's kind of like a, this is like an open area with cubicles. In the middle of the room, on his own, is the infected avatar of Doc, Dark Matter. Uh, he's just kind of wandering aimlessly. All right, sorry for G stands there kind of cocks to her, her head to the side, observes, and how sad. Hmm. I kind of figured, you know, you'd be here operating, but I guess I was wrong. Alright. So when she readies her scythe blade, and starts walking towards the infected um, dark matter, um, and tries to engage it first. And it's just it's just going to turn, see you with a with your with an aggressive stance, and kind of start charging towards you. Um, and and it'll get to act first since you're out of net net actions. Okay. Um, I need you to make a uh, evasion roll. <laughs> Dios mío. Ooh, Natty 10. So that is 14 plus 18. What's that, 32? Yeah, something like that. Way fucking high. Um, yeah, so it, he lunges slowly towards you, um, and you sidestep him. And then an imp comes out of, like, a cubicle and uh, sees you there um, and is also going to attempt to attack you. Ooh. Okay, so I have to try evasion roll again? Yep. All right. 
Okay, so before I evasion roll, Soifunji chuckles as she sidesteps dark matter and says, pathetic fool. And then as she turns to the side and sees the imp approaching her, uh, this roll is an 8. 14 plus 8 is 22. Uh, you're going to take some You're gonna take some damage. Okay. Ooh, not quick enough, Soifunji. Uh, you're going to take four brain damage, and I need you to um, roll uh, resist drugs and torture. Okay. Ooh, and that's like permanent brain damage, and if I get the 10, I die, right? Yeah, something like that, yep. Okay. Ooh. Okay, resist drugs and torture. 22. God, why do I keep rolling eights? That's lucky. You're able to uh, shake off the um, imp who is like latched onto your hand. Oh. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll have take the, you, you took the four damage, but you avoided, uh, continuous damage. Oh, word. Okay. So, so if she slams it down to the floor, can I stomp on it? Or is that like, I can't do that. Um, well, so basically against, uh, programs, you could just zap it, which is a net runner ability makes you, allows you to make an attack against a program or enemy net runner. Um, or you can try to use one of your programs. Okay, I'm gonna zap it. Another eight. Wow. Okay, eighteen. Yeah, that's uh, that's not not gonna succeed. Ooh, these things are strong as fuck. <laughs> like, okay. All right. Does that mean I take? Wait, can I can I move back? Am I in a position to like move back or? Or are you attempting to get out of the combat, or are you just? Because functionally speaking, movement doesn't matter, right? Um, because like the, these things do have have touch attacks, but it's not movement isn't tracked like it is in real life. Yeah, I'm thinking like hitbox. <laughs> so, yeah, so just trying to get on the hitbox. Yeah, that would probably be a slide. Okay, what's dark matter doing right now i'm trying to decide who i need to focus on like at this moment uh i mean he's pick he was picking himself up off the floor um and he's he's shambling back towards you again okay um uh, i feel like this imp is gonna be a problem i need to kill it uh that's only one imp right yeah that's just uh, that that's the only one you've seen okay i'm gonna try zapping that motherfucker again okay seven and interface is 10, 17. Okay, that that time it'll hit. Yeah. The first time he got lucky and he rolled a 10, so we get to roll again. Mm-hmm. Um, this this time it will work. All right. Uh, so you deal 1d6 uh, damage to the program. Okay, bitch got a 6. Nice. All right. Um, yeah, so you see like a little storm cloud come like appear uh, and a lightning bolt shoots out of it and, and zaps this... Um, this imp who comically like you can see his like bones as if he's being x-rayed uh and he'll just do like a little dance and then uh and then derez little fucker all right so from g turns okay that was that was my third two or four. Oh, that was my second move okay i turn to dark matter and says i'm not going to kill you yet can you understand me are you going to try to communicate with him yeah i mean i i need i I'm guessing that Sarfungi like needs his help finding the Hellfire deck, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't want to kill him yet unless I can try to save him first. Um, you don't see any recognition uh, that he knows who you are, or what's going on. Um, other than that, he wants to chomp on your face. Okay, yeah, that's- uh, and he's going to attempt to do that <laughs> because by talking, you gave him an op- o- opening. Oh shit! Okay. Uh oh. All right. G- give me a give me evasion. This is what I get. Ooh, ten. Okay. Every time I see a ten, like my heart just fills with joy. Okay, but that was very sh- <laughs> that was very short lived because I literally rolled a one. So <laughs> um, ten plus one plus fourteen twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Um. He he's just gonna like ch- just lunge at you again. Uh, and you 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 definitely avoid it 
at, like while in i think while in the middle of, of trying to be like hey bud you know do you want to chill out whoa <laughs> <laughs> okay you fucking asshole all right as sorry phone g dips to the side um, she is going to cause ca- ca- some damage. So, um, she's just going to try to knock some sense into him by knocking some life out of him. And she's just going to go straight in with a brain wipe and just see, and just to see what okay. happens. 15? Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll hit. 5 plus 4, 9. Okay, nine damage. Your scythe goes goes through him um, before it's like caught brain um, on like the other zombies. Uh, this one, it, it just kind of splits him in half, uh, and then like the like kind of blocks that set, that make up his body um, kind of fuse themselves back together, and he's going to he's going to attack you again, and this time he gets two attacks. Okay, I wrote a 7, 14, 21. Okay. First, his first is going to miss one more time. I rolled a 4, so 18. That's gonna, This one's going to hit. He rolled, a, he rolled a 10 and then a 7, um, and he has a, he has a plus 10. So, so you take one point of, of brain damage. Uh, give me a resist torture drugs roll. Ooh. Okay, so I take one point. So I'm halfway dead. Okay, come on, Sir Fungi. Girl, get your life together. Alright, resist torture 14 and 25. You narrowly avoid the uh, continuous effects. Ugh, I'm not trying to get continued, man. <laughs> so. He does aim for your brain wipe, too. Is he trying to destroy my scythe? Yes, actually, and succeeds. Um, so the program glitches and derezzes, becoming non-functional. Oh, fuck. Which not only, not only does it derez the, the scythe, it fries the program. Oh, shit, so I can't use it anymore. No, you'll have to, you'll have, if you want a, a brain wipe, you'll have to buy another one. This motherfucker. Okay, shit. Okay, Sir Fungi is mad. Okay, um... Okay, Sir Fungi takes a step back. Kander's going to reach out a meat hand to you uh, and and hand you the sword program. She's just like, uh, I, you, you lost your weapon. Maybe you need another. Okay, Sir Fungi reaches out, grabs it, and stands triumphantly but angrily ready to destroy and says, it's on Dark Matter. I'm taking you down. This is my last move, right? Yes. Okay, Sarifungi is going to have some tact, and I'm going to um, activate Replicator. Uh, yeah, give me a, a D6. Okay, I rolled a two. Uh, there's only one. There's only one other Sarifungi. Okay, this this can work. This can work. Um, so we're going to try a coordinated, um, evasive maneuver, um, to try and confuse him at least. Me, actual Sarfungi, is going to dip to the right. Replicator Sarfungi is going to dip to the left. And we're going to, like, dramatically move to, like, opposite sides of the office um, to see which one of us um, Bright Dark Matter is going to come after. And also, are are the Sarfungi clones, like, they all are they all connected to the same brain? Like, can I see what all the other clones are seeing, or are they just, like, copies that kind of act on it? They're just... They're just holograms of you. Okay. Uh, give me an acting role, because this is the only thing that's, like, that makes sense for, like, trying to manipulate per- somebody by, you know, trickery. Um, and it's a it's a cool skill, so... Seven. Fourteen. Um, okay. Yeah, he's gonna char- he's gonna charge towards the, the clone... All right, as he's charging towards the clone, um, Siphon G is going to charge behind him um, with a sword and go in for a back attack. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just going to hit roll damage. Okay, I rolled a six. Two sixes. What happens if I roll two sixes? Nothing. Okay. I it's only, two... it, D10 is the only thing that, that matters for rolling a ten. 
So I rolled six. Yeah, I mean, you 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 cut through, um, through him, and and he he starts to derez, uh, and there's just like a few pixels uh, left in like a pile on the ground where he was. Sorry, I had to end this way, Dark Matter. I would have loved to know who you are before I ended you. All right, then Sorry, Fungi, like, leans down. Uh, is there any data that's salvageable from those pixels? Yeah, there's, like, a little piece of data. Um, so you can you can use ID to uh, figure out what it is. Okay, I do that. I use ID. 19. Okay. This is... Um, it, it looks to be, like, a location buoy like a an ip address of some kind um and and yeah it looks to be like geographically um a few blocks from the longshoreman in the south wharf interesting okay um so if G, i guess derezes the pixel or whatever whatever's cool again <laughs> and Turns to Candor, um, and says, thanks for the hand, kid. We we got it? Yeah. We have the location of the Hellfire deck. All we have to do is make it out of here alive, and then we can head there. Woohoo! She's going to do, like, a couple of da- uh, dances. <laughs> you did good you hear that here, smoke? Kid. We got it. Yeah. Looks well, like- almost. Almost. But we're in the home stretch, so it looks like we're gonna hold up our end after all. And um, sorry, Foji awkwardly sticks a hand out to shake Pander's hand. And oh, your meat hand? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. She'll shake it. She'll shake it back. Um, and then she's gonna, with her other hand, uh, is going to pull her her cable. All right. And um, sorry, Foji jacks out as well. All right, and now you're just standing in um, this uh, train terminal um, that you left the security up. Oh, hell yeah. So, oh, oh, I should have turned it off before I jacked out, huh? <laughs> That's okay. We don't have to act that out. Okay. We'll just assume it happens. Yeah. But you, there's like this there's like this look of, of excitement and, and relief that like you have the information you're looking for, and then you look down and there's the laser grid, and you're like, Fuck. <laughs> uh, all right, so Koji jocks back in. <laughs> Runs to the thing. And- yeah, you could deal with it. It's it's fine. Um, yeah. You know, all the security has been kind of dealt with already. So, yeah, that, just reaccessing it and doing it, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, but, yeah, you have you have that piece of information, um, and you can, you can rejoin the others, or uh, you can go straight for it. Okay, um... So Fringy is going to turn to Candor and say, all right, the location of the Hellfire deck is just a few blocks from the Longshoremen in the South Wharf. Um, we're going now. We're too close to let anything distract us. And um, so Fringy grabs Candor and starts heading towards the car that they stole. <laughs> <laughs>